Hi friends, this is Callie. Thanks so much for being here with me today. I have a special project to share because we're coloring with Kareem Deco Brush pigment markers. I think this one's a little intimidating for everyone, including myself. This is my first time using these markers. They are paint markers, so the technique is gonna be a little bit different. Bear with me as we explore these markers together. It will look messy at times, but I assure you the results are gorgeous in the end. And if you can just embrace the natural strokes of these paint markers, then you're gonna be just fine. Okay, so here's a quick view of what the full set looks like. This is the master set. There are seven sets total, and within each set, there are 12 markers. These sets are arranged according to palette and color families, so you can customize your own once you get your own, but there are 12 markers in each set, and this little labeling system allows you to customize each set, or you can use the swatch chart that comes with the markers. These markers can be used on so many different surfaces, but for our card today, we're gonna to be using it on heavy cardstock. Okay, I realize I haven't mentioned yet what stamp set we're using. These are the Sweet as Honey and Bee Leaves stamp sets from Hero Arts. This was a favorite overall of the My Monthly Hero kits from 2021. So they've brought them back as individual stamp sets and I'm using both today to create this wonderful card using these Korean markers. On these little bees here, I'm using pastel yellow and gold. I've applied the darker gold color first and then adding the yellow to blend in that color. Now on the bees, the colors are blending a little bit easier. I did find it a little bit trickier to blend other colors on the other parts of the images. To get a soft blue color, I am blending a light blue with a white marker. I'm gonna be using the white marker on the flowers and the branch and the leaves as well. So it's a very versatile color to use on cards if you like the lighter blending. You can mix any two colors together like I did with the yellows or with the whites and blues here. And all you have to do is just scribble a little bit on a piece of scrap paper until the original color returns. It doesn't ruin your nibs at all and it's super easy to use. And because the pigment here is very opaque, you'll notice that I didn't do a perfect job stamping because I knew I was gonna re-stamp for a crisper image later. I stamped the images once using a black ink and wasn't too worried about it not being perfect. I just made sure that my stamps remained inside my stamp positioning tool, and then when I'm done coloring, I can put it back in and re-stamp that image. All right, so moving on to these flowers, they're dogwoods or cherry blossoms, however you want to color them or call them. We are using three different markers here. I'm using poppy, a pastel red, and then again a white for blending. Here you can see that the coloring is not so perfect like they were on the bees. It is a little bit more challenging to get the colors to blend. But again, if you embrace the strokes of these markers, you're gonna be fine. And in the end, once you clean up those lines, you're gonna get a beautiful impression and it's gonna make it all worth it. So I'm adding the darkest color first, much like I do with Copic markers. I guess when I started coloring these, I'm a creature of habit. I started coloring them like I would with Copic markers or with paint. So I am adding the darkest color first, blending out with a medium color, and then using the white marker as a blending medium to kind of get those colors to meld together. I'm going back in with the darker color if I need to, to add a little bit more color and intensify those darker shades. And I'm doing the same on the branches and the greens. For a full list of colors that I used, if you're interested in knowing about the specifics, be sure to check out the coordinating blog post where I'll specify what colors were used. And also all of the products that I used for this card is available at Simon Says Stamp and will be linked below. Another really great thing about these markers is that you can layer colors and they don't run into each other once you let the original layers dry. So right now I'm going over all of those stamens with a yellow marker so I can bring those details back. Now before I put this back into my Misty to re-stamp, I wanna make sure everything is good and dry. So I am heat setting it, but I don't think that's necessary. I'm gonna make sure everything is well prepped. So I've gone over my entire image with a embossing powder tool. And I'm using VersaFine Claire ink in Nocturne Black. It's gonna get a crisp image, and then we can emboss this with clear embossing powder to get a beautiful image. 
what a difference that makes. I'm going to show you a before and after so you can see that it really brings back all of those details to re-stamp this with black and all of the imperfections that you saw before don't seem to matter so much anymore. Okay, so I've added some clear embossing powder and now I'm heat setting it. So it gives it this glossy outline with a little bit of rays and it's gorgeous. With that being said, I went ahead and die cut my images and I'm gonna set them aside to work on a background. Now on a card panel that's white, I'm gonna ink blend some lemonade positively saturated ink on there. And we're just gonna die cut a little window for some interest in the background behind that beautiful branch using a honeycomb die from Hero Arts as well. This was also originally a part of the kit that they've brought back for us and I just love it so much. I'm going to go ahead and die cut that and also die cut at the same time a stitch rectangle around the panel to give it more interest. I'm just going to pop out those little hexagons and on a card base I'm just going to ink blend a little bit of a darker color in sunbeam so that we can have some color behind this beautiful honeycomb window panel as well. I know that my branch is going to cover a lot of it so my ink blending here is nowhere near perfect and it does look splotchy because I'm not starting off at the edge of the paper. I had die cut that stitching around that top panel, the window panel, so I knew that I couldn't blend all the way to the edge of the paper, so the center is just a little bit of a mess, but it's okay. It adds dimension, it gives it a little bit of shape and color, and that's all we really wanted. So I've attached that honeycomb window layer onto my card base using some tape runner, and now I'm attaching the rest of the images with some foam tape to give it lots of dimension. And as you can see, you can't see much of that ink blending, so it didn't need to be perfect anyway. Once I've attached all of my images, last thing I need to do is attach a sentiment. I chose the Sweet as Honey sentiment, and I've prepared a little piece of scrap cardstock here with my embossing powder tool. And I'm just gonna stamp that with Versamark ink, add some white embossing powder, and then heat set that. There is a little bit of residue on there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and scrub or buff that off with a towel, and then I'll fussy cut around my sentiment. I love doing this for scripty sentiments that you can't get a straight sentiment strip out of. It gives it a little bit more interest and a little bit more focus in my opinion. And I'm gonna use my T-ruler to help me line that up and then that finishes our card. I really hope you enjoyed this project using Kareen Deco Brush Pigment Markers. If you like this card, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. I'm gonna link two more videos for you to enjoy if you'd like to see more. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great day. Bye everyone.